Thank you, Jesus. We well, thank you because there's nothing like your word. Your word is powerful. The whole of you is embedded in your word. As the ministry of the word of God goes forth this morning, we ask that illumination would come. We're grateful for what you've done from January up till now. But we're excited because the best is still ahead of us. We rejoice in the ministry of your word of God today. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please, you may have your seat. Once again, welcome to church. And I hope that you're doing well, all of you online. Thank you so much for joining us in this very special service. I will be talking about don't cry, give thanks. Don't cry, give thanks. Don't cry, do what? Give thanks. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, don't cry. Give thanks. All of you watching online, type in the comment section. Say, don't cry. Give thanks. One of the things you would notice about the heritage of faith we have is that we come from a rich heritage of faith. The heritage of faith we have are not people that did not have challenges. Are people that had marital challenges. People that had health challenges. People that had financial challenges, people that had business challenges, but in a heritage of faith, what happens is that they always end up having a testimony. That's why the Bible says we should follow them who through faith have obtained the promises. And I'm saying so because when you go through this world, if you have been through things like me, there will be situations that want to mess up your faith. Your eyes is fully soaked and you're really crying and breaking down. And the reason why you're doing that is because everything seems to have turned upside down. I don't know if you're falling through a season of depression. Maybe because you have a bill and you've been praying and speaking God's word about this bill, but the bill has not manifested. Maybe it's sometime it has to do with a marriage. And you're believing that it will happen in 2021. Now 2021 came and went. It did not happen. Now we're in 2022 and it's just like that. You know, and, and you can sink into the pressure. Sometimes it's a business. It's a fact that you've been running this business and you have done so well, but you need a huge amount of money to be able to scale. Let's say the money in question is about 250 million. You've been able to put together 10 million, but it's still a far cry from where you are going. And you're wondering that, Lord, what is happening? And until you get this amount of money, you cannot take a leap. The natural human behavior is to sink into a place of depression. The natural human behavior is to sink into, to break down emotionally. But this is the cancel of the word of God. That when you go through these times that you should not cry but give thanks. One of the things you will notice about the fathers of faith is this. When they went through very, very difficult times, they did not cry. They were, they were, they were overwhelmed. They broke down. They were torn apart. But in those same seasons, it seemed as if they've mastered their faith. They've learned to give glory to God. One of the best scriptures that explain it is a scripture about Abraham. The Bible says when Abraham crossed 90 years old, he crossed 95. He crossed to an extent his body began not to function you know when the bible says that it has stopped to be with the man of women as it was with sarah sarah was not just in menopause she had passed someone that had sexual feeling abraham did not just say he could not perform he there was no sexual feeling the bible says in that situation abraham began to give glory to god let's say you are believing god for a contract and you're believing God for the contract. And the final day for the contract came and the contract did not come your way. And you're going and you're saying, what is this? What, what is this exactly? I prayed, I fasted, it not happen. That's not how faith talks. Instead of crying in that place where you don't understand, what faith says is this. My head may not understand, but God is in charge. My head may not understand, but God is in charge. So the thing is that don't cry. Just what? Give thanks. Don't cry. Do what? Give thanks. Don't cry. Do what? Give thanks. After Noah had gone through the massive loss where the whole world had been swept away water, as soon as Noah came out of the flood, the first thing he did was to offer sacrifices. The Bible speaks of David when he was in Ziegler. 
He was really, really attacked. David was really, really attacked. And when David was attacked, he was attacked. You know, his family was taken away. The Bible makes us know that he wept. But after he wept, he went into a place of worship, inquiring what the will and the purpose of the Lord is. Let's read some scripture. Second Samuel chapter 12. So I wanted to notice something. The hero of faith we follow that had testimonies, what did they do when they had tough situations that made them actually rejoice? Second Samuel chapter 12 in verse 15. Second Samuel chapter 12 in verse 15. Glory to God. The Bible says, And Nathan departed unto his house, and the Lord struck the child Uriah's wife bear unto the um, the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife bear unto David that it was sick, and David besought the Lord God for the child, and David fasted and went in and lay all night upon the earth. He was taking a prayerful posture, hoping that this judgment will overturn. Hoping that this attack will be cancelled. Hoping that this difficult thing will change. He was praying that this business will go through a transformation. He was praying that this relationship would not break up. The Bible says, and the elders, and the Bible says, and the elders of his house arose, verse 17, and went unto him to raise him from the earth. But he would not, neither did he eat bread. He was fasting. And it came to pass on the seventh day that the child died, and the servant of David feared to tell him that the child was dead. And they said, while the child was yet alive, we spake unto him, and it will not hearken unto our voice. What then, what, it, how will he then vex himself if we tell him that the child is dead? But David, when he saw the servant whispered, David perceived that the child was dead. And David said unto the servant, is the child dead? And they said, he is dead. And David arose from the earth and washed and anointed himself, changed his apparel. This is not the normal way people behave. When they lose pregnancy, have miscarriage, they cry for 21 days. The Bible says when David said, Shebi is dead, he woke up, he got up. When people lose money, this is not how they behave. This is not how the people of, see, this is how the people of faith behave. You know how, why they behave this way? The people of faith know there's nothing lost that cannot be restored. Oh my God. <laughs> so, it's with human that is terminal, with God, even if it's a loss of time. He said the years, the locusts and the canker. He didn't say what they ate. He said the years. He said time is a commodity that cannot be stored. But when it comes to God, it can be restored. Are you listening to me, somebody? Meaning that the gap you missed for the five years when you were behind, God can work it so much in such a way that that gap is compressed into five months. Everybody say, I receive it. So see what the Bible says. The Bible says this, and I understand. So a single lady is dating this guy and they thought they would marry. They had a terrible breakup. Then she sinks into a depression. A man is pursuing this contract in NMPC, scaled the first level, scaled the first second level, scaled the third level, and it broke down. And the guy said, you know what? I'm out of here. Look at David. The Bible says when the child died, the people of the flesh said, hey, he's going to sink into depression. See what David did. And verse 19, and when David saw his servant whisper and perceived that the child was dead, David said unto his servant, is the child dead? They said the child is dead. Verse 20 said, Then David arose from the earth, washed himself and changed his apparel, and came into the house of God and worshipped. And he came into his own house and required that they set bread before him. And he did eat. That's the people of faith. Let me tell you something. The people of faith knows it is not over until God says so. So, when it seems it's over, and God, has, and God has not blown the whistle, the game continues. Why am I saying this to you? It's possible for you to go through a situation that damages your soul. It's possible for you to go through something that damages your spirit. But the thing is that in that situation, if you can just learn, 
and say, although there has been a setback, let me go into a place of thanksgiving, you will have a testimony. And that's why we say to people, if the devil cannot take your joy, he cannot keep your stuff. You know why we say so? Because, oh my God, because what will keep you fighting is your joy. So if your joy can stay intact, you will take the stuff back. But if the attack of the devil takes your joy, you have lost it. Glory to God. The same thing with Job. Job chapter 19. Job says, even though I'm sick, my redeemer leave it. He said, even though worms come out of my body, he said, yet I will praise him. He said, the reason why he knew that is this. This is what the people of faith know. Listen to me. It's human hand and perspective that seem as if it's going out of control. With God, it's still under control. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Romans chapter 8 and verse 7. Romans chapter 8 and verse 7. Romans chapter 8, let's read from verse 5 first. And I want to teach you something. And I, I read this thing from this thing that I want to tell you. The person that, one of the first person that I heard this story that demonstrated this spiritual principle is a man called Andrew Womack. Andrew Womack said he got a call that his child was dead. He said by the time he got to where the child was, his, of course, it's a white family. The child had turned black. Like, is it blue or black? Yeah, it was dying. He said when he got there, he said, instantly, I felt the emotion of grief, pain, and sadness. And I reminded myself, if I allow this emotion to overtake me, I will never have a testimony. He said, if I stay in this emotion, that means I've given up. He said, what emotion should I have if I'm in faith? He said, the emotion I should have is the emotion of thanksgiving and praise that God is still working. He said, I laid close to my child, prayed for him, and began to give praise to God. He said, within the next couple of hours, thereabouts, he said, the child that was confirmed dead came back alive. You know what that means? When you receive the letter of rejection, what the devil wants you to do is cry. The moment you cry, he rejoices. But surprise the devil. And let him know that I'm in the class of the senior in faith. I'm not in the class of the junior. You take the letter, you begin to worship God. When you begin to worship God, there's a confusion in his camp. Because what they thought will brought to depression has turned into what thanksgiving. The devil will tell the angel, you better leave this one. He's a lunatic. Nothing you can do can make him sad. You, do, you better look for somebody else to attack. But when they know any smart thing on your finance, I break down. Uh-huh. Any smart thing on your money, I break down. Uh -huh. Any smart thing on your job, I break down. Uh -huh. So he has found out to be playing with you. He knows. Have you not found people that you can tell their pressure point? You can tell things that trigger them. And when you want to mess up with them, you just begin to press their button. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. Romans chapter 8 and verse 5. See what the Bible says here. For they that after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. He says the people that live in the flesh respond after the flesh. So there is a respond after the flesh. So when something happens, you will hear them say, why me? When something happens, you will say, God, why are you just looking? When something happens, and let me tell you something. As a Christian, you cannot be that way. He said, they that mind the flesh, they are always looking at the senses. They are always looking at the feelings. They are always looking at the things that go around. He says, they that mind the flesh do live after the flesh. But the Bible says, we are not of the flesh. We are of the spirit. That means we do not mind the flesh. So you are praying about those lump in your breast. You will go back there and touch it. You will go back there and touch it. You say, I'm using my faith. You will touch it. Listen to me. The more you touch it, no matter what you're saying, the bigger it will grow. Because you know what? You're touching it shows that it's there. See what the Bible says. He says, for they that are after the flesh to mind the things of the flesh... But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. That means if the lump is in your breast, how do I mind the things of the spirit? I don't go and be troubling my breast where the lump is. 
I go to the things of the spirit, which is the word. The things of the spirit is in the word. What does the word say? By his stripes I am healed. Blessed is the fruit of my body. So I allow those things consume me. What does this mean practically? I look at the letter and I see that they've rejected me. I go back to the word. The word says that the stone which the builders have rejected, the same has become the head of the corner. I look at where my mates are. That's not where I want to be. I seem to be behind them. I go back. See, the more I look at them at Instagram, I'm minding the things of the flesh. The more I see what they're doing, I'm minding the things of the flesh. The more I see the doctor's report, I'm minding the things of the flesh. I go back to the word. What does the word say? The Bible says, I shall be the head and not the tail. I shall be above only, not beneath. That's what the Bible says. I understand that I'm not where they are, but guess what? There is a grace to catch up. Up. The Bible says it will give me double for my shame. Somebody say hallelujah. Yeah. Let me tell you something. If you're going to be a very powerful Christian, one of the things is that you're going to look stupid. You are going to choose to believe when others cannot see it. And let me tell you something. It's not the kind of belief that believe. You are going to be aggressively believe it. And say, come on, I, I found it. Come on. And, and the reason why is that that thing is active in you. Everybody that boasts of a testimony saw it before it happened. You will look at the company and say, come on. Come on. We're doing the first hundred million this year. And, and your wife will say, hmm. 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 Joseph the dreamer, continue prophesying. That's how they called him Joseph the dreamer. But the people that said it was a dreamer, they came to live his dreams. Uh, glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. This is what faith means. See, you can't keep checking what the dollar rate is and what is happening over there and your faith to be stable, your faith to shake. He said, they that mind the flesh live after the flesh. They, I mind the things of the spirit. So the way I see, I see through the eye of the spirit. You go to brighter shops and you're checking brighter clothes. <laughs> then your friend says, mm -mm, Sarah, are you engaged? You say you don't know. <laughs> your friend knows that you're not engaged. <laughs> and she begin to laugh. Say, don't worry. God, that call it the things that be not. I'm not talking about you. I stole the way. I tell, yeah, 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 yeah. I stole the way. You say, just come, just come. Just take a picture. Take a picture. Take a picture. Why? 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 The Bible says in Genesis 1, and God said, and God said, and God said. Then the last verse says, and God saw. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. You are a child of faith. Faith is in your spirit. Are you hearing me? Faith. Say faith is in my spirit. Because faith is in my spirit, I take faith steps. Glory to God. The doors we don't knock in my family. I go and knock it because faith is in my spirit. Things that don't happen in my family, I attempt it because faith is in my spirit. Somebody say I believe it. I'm a child of God. The Bible says the righteous shall be as bold as lion. We don't chicken out. We don't cave in. We charge towards the goal. Hallelujah. We are not them that give up. We charge towards the goal. We believe it shall be even as it was told us. Oh, glory to God. Lift up your hands and pray in tongues, everybody. Shaligas kapante le mazanzada, listokena rakipatonde le bashkatoska. Estikemana, all of you watching online, lift up your hands and pray in the Holy Ghost. Listekemana na na, ebriki tu sitanto na, eksti Kristo statata, bariba rabatamris kaposha, eksti krino mumprazo. In Jesus' name, we pray. Glory to God. Yeah. Romans chapter 8 verse 7. It said for they that after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that after the spirit, the things of the spirit. As a child of God, you can't be making up and down choices. Mm -mm. You are, we are led of the spirit. Other people marry husband based on height. We marry husband based on guidance. 
other people relocate based on papers we relocate based on guidance because the one of the spirit mind the things of the spirit other people are worried about this and this we say i am the planting of the lord glory to god i said glory to god i said glory to god what is the problem of being carnally minded listen what is the carnal mind the carnal mind is the mind that is totally possessed by the senses the senses rule it what is a carnal mind this is a carnal mind it lives by the senses once it feels something then it says i feel those things you can feel something but there's a superior feeling and i don't live by my feelings i live by faith you must understand that. I don't live by my feeling. I live by faith. You wake up in the morning and you feel a certain way. I live by faith. I live by faith. I live by faith. I don't live by my feelings. I live by faith. I live by faith. I live by faith. I don't live by my feelings. I live by faith. I live by faith. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. He says, why is it, what's the problem of being carnally minded? This is the problem. The Bible says to be carnally minded is what? Anywhere you're carnally minded, you introduce the principle of death. So you keep saying, hey, hey, who will give me the capital? Who will give me the capital? I've been praying for healing all this one. I've not received, I've not received, I've not received, I've not received. The Bible says when you begin to talk like that, death will enter. The principle of death will enter. He says to be carnally minded is death. Did you see the problem of the carnal mind? Every time there is a setback, there's a way you just say, I'm tired. I'm giving up. He said to be carnally minded is death. But see what the Bible says. He said to be spiritually minded is what? Life. Life and peace. Life and peace. Did you hear that? You want life to come your business? Be spiritually minded. See, that's why the kind of mind, when something goes wrong or they make a loss, they don't see a reason to give thanks to God. Because for the kind of mind, it's over. How can I give thanks to God? How can I give thanks to God? Don't you know what has happened? But the spiritual mind doesn't think that way. When something goes wrong, he says, thank you, Jesus. Because he knows all things work together for good. Hey, did you read James? James says, count it all joy when you're a kaba, yeah, 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 yeah. He says, count it all joy when you fall into difficult times. James says, you just lost 10 million. Hallelujah. Hey, so say, hallelujah. James says, the reason why you say that is that he's coming back. There's nothing lost that cannot be restored. Stop talking as if it's final. Uh-uh. Until God says so, nothing is final. Why am I saying this to you? As we're running Thanksgiving today. As we're running Thanksgiving today. You must know that we don't thank God because things are perfect. We thank God because that's a response of the spiritual man. Either it's going well, we thank God. If it's not going well, we thank God. If it's almost there, we thank God. Thanksgiving is the water. We used to water the things that are growing. Always thanking God. Look at this. The Bible says that Jesus Christ told Andrew, Philip, he says, let's feed all of them. And Philip said, we don't have bread. And even if we have money, we don't have enough money to feed everybody. Philip, natural man. He was seeing all the limitations. He was seeing all of it. What do I know in an NPC? What do I know in PZ? What do I know to get me the job? What do I know for the approval? Who is going to marry me here? Who is going to help me with the scholarship? Who is going to help with the approval? That's what the carnal mind was thinking. Jesus was not doing that. Jesus said, give me what you have. He took it. He began to give thanks. He began to give thanks. Listen to me. As he gave thanks, the multiplying power of God came on what was not enough. You had a miscarriage. Father, that I even got pregnant. I thank you. 
Oh, Tamanama Yaraba. I thank you. Because he that has begun the good thing will finish it. Because the Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Uh, have you not seen some people before? They are healed. But the healing is somehow. They say, mm, watch, oh, watch, watch, watch how they fall into demonic trap. They say, I'm healed. But I can do some things, but I can't do some things. Why are you focusing on what you cannot do? Why not focus on what you can do? Is that not why the night Nepal did not receive total healing? Because they kept focusing. My hand has been cut off. My toe has been cut off. The one that his hand and toe was cut off that came and said thank you. What did he do? As he said thank you, everything was added. In the kingdom, when things get tough, we thank God. When things go well, we thank God. First of all, you must know where you are is somebody else's breakthrough point. Let, let me even start. Is it not because you are married, you are thinking you don't have a child? What about your mates are not married? You've forgotten that this marriage that you have itself, it's a testimony. You've forgotten so soon. Your mates are not even saying, I want to have a child. They say, if I can just find someone to marry me for one week. But now, you are married for two years and you are so forgotten what the Lord has done. And you don't understand the more, where you are is a breakthrough. Do you know that the things you have forgotten today were once your prayer point? Are you here? The car you were driving, you remember how much you prayed for it? The job you have, remember how much you prayed for it? But you've forgotten. Why are human beings so forgetful? He said, yo, well, I'm okay, but it's just, it's, just, it's just that I'm having this pain on my leg. I, I'm wondering when the Lord will heal me. You should be grateful it's a pain on your leg. It's not wheelchair that you have. Because those on wheelchair, what will he say? Those on wheelchair are just saying, if I can have this pain and not use this wheelchair again, I will be so grateful. See, I'm saying to you something. I'm saying to you something. So I'm, saying, I'm a single girl. Since I have not got someone to marry me. Huh? Oh, you know, yeah, in, in the U.S., <laughs> in the U.S., there's no guy to marry me. Some ladies in Nigeria, if they get to the U.S., they don't want husband again. <laughs> they, they say, Lord, they say, husband or U.S., say, Father, leave husband. Just give me passports. But now you've gotten that you've forgotten. That your, your brother, what the problem is that, you know, you know, I just need this. I will just get this 250 million. <laughs> You've got 25 million. You say that's not, that's chicken change because your level now 25 million is chicken change. Do you know how many people, if they get 25 million, will roll forward, roll backward, every day be giving thanks? Was that not what you are just five years ago? You've forgotten so soon. And you know one of the things the Spirit of God does is this. I want to show it to you. One of the things the Spirit of God does is this. Hey, have you noticed Israel? Every time they had a major breakthrough, God will take, take the stone as a memorial. Remember this. God wants them to always live in thanksgiving so that when they face bigger problems, they will face it out of the confidence of what God has done in the past. But God's people are always forgetting what he has done. They are always focused on what is undone. And the Bible says, the spiritually minded, the spiritually minded, the spiritually minded. I want to ask you a question. Look for reasons to thank God. You are in traffic. Oh, wow. That's a great place to be. Me and my husband can have time to talk some more. You know, many people cannot enjoy themselves because they're not grateful. The husband they marry, that's what they complain about now. The wife they marry, that's their new complaint. When they get to the office, it's Monday. Everybody didn't have the bad attitude. They just forget that this job was once a prayer point. That this marriage was once a prayer point. See, the key is this. The moment you thank him for what he's done in your life, it will multiply. Let me tell you something. This is the reason why God wants to be thankful. Can I, can I tell you? Every time you're thankful, 
the force of joy will grow in your life. Have you noticed? Depressed people are never thankful. Thankful people are never depressed. Because thanksgiving comes with joy. And the Bible says it's with joy that we draw waters out of the well of salvation. He said, it's the joy of the Lord that is my strength. You will find that, that how come I'm tired when it comes to business? Because your joy has gone. You'll find that, how come I'm tired when it comes to my, because your joy has gone. What took your joy? Unthankfulness. Look at Jesus. He wanted to fill the multitude. The Bible says, to be spiritually minded. This is our spiritual mind things. It says, to be spiritually minded is life. You want life to come into the place? Think like spiritual minded people. That's how life goes there. Today, as we thank God, we're, we're going to thank Him voraciously, <laughs> extravagantly, extraordinarily, because God has been good and kind to us. Let me show you some about Thanksgiving. If you're driving a car, let's drive. Did you get the steering? Oh, thank you. Thank you. You got something. At least you're able to help me. Watch this. You're driving, right? Where you're going to is ahead of you. Let's put the destination. I'm going towards the Koyi runabout. I'm driving. But guess what? You're going towards the Koyi runabout. If you start looking at an accident, what will happen to you? Huh? What will happen to you? You have an accident. What does that mean? What you look at determines where you go. If you look, watch this now. If you look at all the good things that God has done in your life, you will go towards goodness. If you look at all the things that are not working, you will go towards what failure. The question is this. You have the staring of your life. What are you looking at? Because it's right there in front of you. And some of you will be driving, 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 driving. And you're looking at I want to ask you, what was the problem of Eve? That was Eve's problem. Everything God provided for was not enough. It was what was not provided for. That was what she was looking for. Eventually, she lost the garden. In you looking at what is not working, every other thing will start crumbling down. But if you choose... And say, I want to place my focus on what is working. Everything will be building, working. I've trained myself. And I train myself all the time. There are many things. See, I train myself. When I wake up in the morning, I ask myself, what are three things to be grateful for? Because I, I just want to say, Father, thank you. That's very careless. That's empty. I ask myself specifically, what are the three things to be grateful for? Number one, I can get up. Hands are walking. Legs are walking. My children are not in the hospital. My family surround me. I'm grateful. Do you know how many people are on tablets every day to be strong? If they don't take tablets, they will end up at home. One, one of our brothers got one, 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 one. I mean, I was sharing this in the next level. One man told me his wife got pregnant. He said, to get my wife pregnant, we've spent over a hundred thousand pounds doing IVFs. Hundred thousand pounds doing IVFs. This is a pregnancy that you are now fighting your wife about. You've got to pregnant again. You've got to pregnant again. Someone cannot touch you. Someone cannot touch you. And it's not in pregnant. And it's not in pregnant. Glory to God. You work, someone say, I, I just work for civil service. You, you, so you work for civil service? Such a peaceful job. <laughs> People that work in bank, their life is never up and down. Up and down, up and down. Because you're driving, you never stop to see. And this is the thing about focus. Where focus goes, multiplication will happen. If you focus on the negativity, Guess what? Even though you're going here, you will find yourself turning here and going. And that's how some people destroy their relationships. Let me tell you something. You know why? You know how people destroy relationships? They focus on what is not working. 
So when they see their girlfriend, it's always what she's done wrong. When they see their boyfriend, always what she's done wrong. When they see their brother, always what she's done wrong. Have you noticed that uncle that always complains about you? What do you do? You stay away. People stay away from people that see what is always wrong. People want to stay around people that see what is always right. Are you a what is always right person or what is always wrong person? You come to this church right now. Mm. <laughs> Look at the choir. How can they dress like that? Hey, can't pastor be my brother today? Today is Thanksgiving. Oh, the seat are so squished. Hey, as I touch you, touch somebody. You should not even be happy people are touching you. You don't understand some people you can't touch them because of the smell. You should be you should be, even Father, thank you. That people are sitting on my right hand and left and they are not covering their nose. You know some people, if they say Usher says sit here, after five minutes, they say Usher, no. Usher, no. They say what? They say the, the glory coming from her. The, the anointing coming from him, they smell. You say, Usher, go and try it. People sit down beside you. You don't know the glory of God. See, we will soon take tight offering and thanksgiving offering right now. I want to ask you that you even have to give. You say, how much is my tight self? Just 10,000. Just 5,000. That you have to give. Do you know how many people cannot give somebody else 10,000? See how blessed the Lord has made you. Someone say, mm, you, you can't talk like that. You can't talk like that. I'm not even in a relationship. Hey, but guys are toasting you anyhow. They are parading you like tear of a car. Are you not excited? You, every time you walk, they talk about you. Even those that cannot talk to your face, you look at Look at the businessman. Look at all the relationships you have. You know the governor. You know the deputy governor. You know this. You know that. You know... Question, what did your father know? Can you not see how blessed you are? You know, you not say, wait, wait, wait. Everybody I know. What, how has he helped me? Thank God for the food that you know. One day, the door will open from there. You, sometimes you see mothers tired of their children. Hey, do you know what others have done to have a child? And yet don't have a child. And you say, oh, this children, I'm so this. Hey. Hey. Because you forget that what you complain about is somebody else's prayer point. And you live your life. And you say you're going somewhere. But you're looking at what's not working. But the thing is this. It doesn't matter where you want to go. You don't go where you want to go. You go where you're focused on. What, what does that mean? You don't go where you want to go. You go what? Where you're focused on. As we praise and worship the Lord today. And this is how you thank God. You're going to start by reflecting. Think of three things that happened from January up till now. And if you don't know some things, maybe I can remind you that this year you've not been to the hospital. Maybe I can remind you that this year a lot put that in the church service. You've come to church every Sunday this year. Nothing has happened to you. Are you here, somebody? Let me remind you. Inflation is at the all-time highest in the last few years. Yet, you have not begging for food. Your children are not begging for school fees. You are still paying salaries in the company. See what the Lord has done for you. That's why I say, first of all, you think and thank God. Then from a, from a heart that is full, you say, thank you, Jesus. And when it's not time to give our offerings and Thanksgiving offerings, we just take it out. Either you're online or you're offline and dump it on the altar. And say to the lifter up of my head, thank you. So, listen to me. We're not thanking him because things are perfect. We're thanking him because the spiritually minded person knows that in all season, the way we give life is to thank him. If I'm carnally minded, if I complain, I will bring death. If I watch this now, if I complain about the let, let's read Romans chapter. I want to read this. Romans, 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 Romans chapter 8, verse 5. And this is the last scripture. He says, then. 
For to be carnally minded, verse 6, is death. So, if I talk flesh, I will kill it. No wonder many of you killed the contract. You killed it. As soon as they rejected you, you got upset. You killed it. Uh-uh. You would take the rejection rector, turn it to thanksgiving. Why? What you give death, you bring life into it. You know what? When you bring life into something, life can consume death. That's what happened with Lazarus. Jesus Christ spoke life. The life consumed death in Lazarus. Glory to God. As you speak life through thanksgiving, you consume death. Let's go ahead and praise and worship and honor and visit. Are we ready, everybody? All of you online, stand on your feet. Lift up your hands towards heaven. Give him praise. Think of free things. Let's go ahead and give him praise and give him glory. Let's go ahead and give him praise and give him glory. Let's go ahead and give him praise and give him glory. Let's go ahead and give him praise and give him glory. Let's go ahead and give him praise and give him glory. We give you praise, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lift up your hands towards heaven and give him praise. No matter how bad it is, there is a reason to thank him. No matter how bad it is, there is a reason to thank him. No matter how good it is, there is a reason to thank him. Thank you, Jesus. And Father, we honor you today. We're grateful. Our heart is full. Our mouth is full of the goodness, of the kindness, of the faithfulness, of the generosity, of the steadfastness of this our God. You've done more than we can say. You've done more than we can say. As a family, we thank you. Those in this life center, thank you. Those watching online, thank you. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. From January, February, March, April, May, June. Now the end of June is here. What a mighty God we serve. Thank you for blessings that money can buy. Thank you for blessings money cannot buy. Thank you for life. Thank you for children. Thank you for husbands. Thank you for wives. Thank you for sons. Thank you for daughters. Thank you for parents. Thank you for health. Thank you for long life. Thank you for provision. Thank you for progress. Thank you all the way, oh God. You are the lifter up our head. The God of Abraham. The God of Isaac. The God of Jacob that's never failed us. We bless Bless your holy name this morning. We bless your holy name this morning. We bless your holy name this morning. And we give you the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Were you blessed today? Were you blessed today? Glory to God. Let's go ahead and have our sit. Amen.